Here's the next one I learned that changed me forever, and that's recruiting, introducing the business opportunity to new people, learning how to give a good invitation, learning how to give two kinds of presentation, formal and informal. And the third part of recruiting, of course, is following up. Once you start a new life, now you've got to take care of it, like a new mother would take care of her baby. You don't start a new life and abandon it. You start a new life and nourish it like a mother and protect it like a father. You've got to be mo both mother and father to a new person. Nourishment, ideas like a mother. Protection, help defend your new life against the encroachment of outside voices that would try to talk them out of it. So you've got to be mother and father in this art of recruiting. We call it being a sponsor. And being a sponsor is like being a bridge, helping somebody from darkness to light, from skeptic to faith, from not knowing to knowing, from no confidence in themselves to starting to gain confidence. You're the bridge that helps people from the shadows to the sunlight. It's one of the most exciting positions to occupy in all of network marketing industry, is the bridge, helping people crossing the bridge out from discouragement into recognition. Being this bridge, that's what the recruiting magic is all about. You've got the answers. They've been looking for the answers. You've got the answers. And you help them cross this bridge. You see something in them before they can see it in themselves. You assure them that it's possible to be more than they are, therefore they can earn more than they've got, have more than they possess. This is one of the great arts in the world. And here's what's exciting about this art. It pays big money because now you operate a unique philosophy taught first in the Bible John Kennedy taught it in his inaugural speech Zig Ziglar's got one of the best ways to put it and that's the secret to wealth the secret to wealth and fortune first taught in the Bible because the question was asked how can we achieve greatness great wealth great power great influence great recognition great self-esteem how can we achieve greatness the master teacher was asked and here was his formula for achieving personal greatness. He said, find a way to serve the many, for service to many leads to greatness. For those that are interested. Some people aren't interested, but for those that are, service to many leads to greatness. Someone says, well, best I can do is just take care of myself, which is okay, but it doesn't lead to greatness. Somebody says, I got enough bills of my own, I can't worry about someone else's bills. That's okay, but it doesn't lead to greatness. Greatness is helping people pay their bills, you forget about yours. Because if you help enough people pay theirs, yours disappear. Help people with problems, your problems disappear. The key to greatness, the master teacher taught, is finding a way. Now, a lot of people would like to serve many people, but they don't have a way. And what's exciting about you and your business is, you've now got the way. Whether you use it or not, it's up to you. Whether you cash it in or not is up to you. Whether you make a fortune or just a little, that's all up to you. Each person's ambition, it's called the same marketing, the same product. These products are the same for everybody here. The marketing system is the same. The difference is each person's philosophy and each person's individual ambition. But whatever your ambitions are, now you've got the ways and means. And here's what you've got the ways and means to do. Serve as many people as you would like. Now, here's what's exciting about recruiting. With what you're involved in here, you can directly and indirectly affect the lives of dozens of people. Some of you are going to directly and indirectly affect the lives of hundreds of people. And some of you, if you wish, can directly and indirectly affect the lives of thousands of people. And the pay is accordingly. If you affect a few, you earn that pay. If you affect the many, you earn that pay. But the secret is found in the Bible. Service to many leads to greatness. Now, John Kennedy said it in his inaugural speech. Here's what he said. Don't ask. Don't we wish that was the current political philosophy? Where is John Kennedy and his philosophy? John Kennedy said, don't ask. That's important if you understand philosophy. He said, don't ask what the people can do for you. Don't ask what the country can do for you. Don't ask what the government can do for you. That's not how you get rich. That's not how you have high self-esteem. That's not how you get trophies to put on the mantle above the fireplace, asking what the people can do for you. Don't ask, he said, what the people can do for you. But ask, what could I do for my country? 
And the country means the people. What could I do for the people? I want trophies. I want recognition. I want high self-esteem. I would even like, like a chance to make a fortune. John Kennedy says it's easy. Don't ask what the people can do for you, but ask, what could I do for the people? Could I directly and indirectly serve many in my country? And now that you are participating in this program, the answer is yes. Now, Zig probably said it best. Zig's got some great stuff. Zig and I have been good friends for a lot of years. Zig says money isn't everything, but it ranks right up there with oxygen. <laughs> Zig, you're right. Zig says, my dentist told me, Zig, only floss the teeth you want to keep. You know, forget the rest. But here, Zig is famous for this now. This is one of Zig's philosophies, and it goes right along with the other two, the Bible and John Kennedy. Here's what Zig says. If you help enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. If you help enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. Now, wanting everything you want, we call that self-interest. But it's, it, it's okay to have self-interest if you do it in a positive way. By helping enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. Now, you can accomplish all that by learning this next skill called recruiting. And I learned it, and it made me fortunes. So now I've got three skills, milking cows, making sales, and recruiting. Here's next I learned, communication, how to conduct a meeting. I learned identification, logic and reason, attack and confess, solution. Simple deals on communication. Wasn't easy for me at first. I stood up to give my first presentation, my mind sat back down. <laughs> right? Y'all been through that? Opened my mouth, nothing came out for a while. But here's what I did. I did it again. Just jot that phrase down. I did it again. That's the secret to how I got here. 35, 40 years later, it's how I got here. I did it once. It was uncomfortable. That first presentation was so lousy. If I hadn't have been doing it, I'd have gone home. <laughs> it was not that good. But here's the secret to how I got here. I did it again, and then I did it again, and then I did it again, and I did it again. I remember when I first decided to be a little more animated, right? and walk out away from the podium, right? Get out from just behind the podium. So I got out there, and then I thought, how do you get back? <laughs> Whoa, I'm stranded out here. Remember those times, doing something for the first time? But you learn quickly in your business, right? In your business, a guy stands up to give his first testimonial, and he's so nervous, he forgets his own name, right? And 30 days later, he wants to give a three-hour testimonial, right? You can hardly get him off the stage. So, learn communication. How to affect other people with words. That's the greatest art in the world to learn. How to affect other people with words. Key phrase, don't be lazy in language. If you learn to use the gift of your own language wisely, it can make you a fortune and build an incredible life. Here's three other things I learned. One is to train. Training people how the business works. And then I've used another word called teach. Train and teach. And only to say this, training people how the business works, teaching is how life works. Because here's what all of us need for the 21st century, business skills and life skills. The life skills are leadership skills. The life skills are learning how to set goals. Now, here's the ultimate skill to learn that can transform your life and the life of whoever will listen, the ability to inspire. Inspire means help people to look up a little higher than where they are and wish they could get there and inspire them that it's possible. Here's how we inspire, by our own testimonial. If I can do it, you can do it. Here's how else we inspire, by others' testimonial. If they can do it, Mary, you can do it. Getting people to see themselves better than they are. Getting people to see themselves richer than they are. Getting people to see themselves more capable next year than they are this year. Getting to see themselves in the future to help both your kids and your people. Here's what you must learn to do. Number one, help people to see themselves as they are. If people have made mistakes, they gotta know it. You can't go on making mistakes and hope to achieve. Mistakes have to be corrected. And you've got to do it with your children, help them to see themselves as they are. If they've messed up, here's what you've got to say. You've messed up. But here's what's important as a parent, don't leave them in the mess. Some parents, you know, 
tell their kids they've messed up and then they leave them in the mess. They don't paint a better picture. Here's what you could become with just a couple of more changes. Rather than this, here's what you could be. So we must help our children see themselves as they are, but here's the greatest gift, to help our children see themselves better than they are. To transport them not only past to see their mistakes, but transport them to the future to see their opportunity. To see the person they can become. My mentor had that greatest gift to help me to see myself better than I was. At first it was difficult to see, and then I started to believe, and that's how I got here today.